As much as I like astronomy, you may find it funny, but I hate telescopes. It seems like no matter what you do, the eyepiece is in an uncomfortable location. Uh, I don't like the eye strain of having, having to keep one eye closed or wearing an eye patch. And don't even get me started talking about the hassles of uh, the image you see in the eyepiece moving in the exact opposite direction of how you move the telescope. It makes star hopping a real pain. My solution was to go to binoculars which provide erect or correct images and mounting them on a binocular chair that I can sit in so that I'm always comfortable and I don't have to stretch to reach the eyepieces. There were two things about this project that really surprised me. The first is how easy it was to build. It went together in just two days. And the second is how much fun it is to use. I'm no longer uncomfortable. I can uh, lean back and uh, enjoy astronomy for the first time in years. And if that's not good enough, the chair even comes with a cup holder. Here's how I built it. The base consists of two pieces of two foot by two foot by three-quarter inch thick uh, birch plywood with a pancake or lazy susan bearing in between them to provide the rotational freedom. I just nailed pieces of two by fours to the bottom of the uh, the base plate to provide some feet for stability. The pancake bearing is mounted on the center of the baseboard but it's mounted towards the rear of the um, chair itself. And the reason for that is, is when you're in the chair and you're uh, reclined back and because of the weight of the uh, binoculars, the center of weight is not on the center of this board, but it's actually quite far back. By mounting this bearing on the rear of this uh, baseboard, uh, you, you get uh, you avoid uh, torques on this and it runs much smoother. I put some metal strapping on the rear and the uh, front of the chair's baseboard to keep the uh, chair from sliding off of it and then I added a couple of strapping irons which can be rotated like this so that when you're putting it together the, binoc the weight of the binoculars doesn't call the cause the chair to, to fall over backwards. The chair itself I got from Walmart. I believe it cost about $30. I went through and tried all of their chair offerings and selected the one that was the most comfortable because I'm going to be sitting in it for several hours and also that reclined back the most. I didn't go with a chase lounge because I need my feet on the ground to uh, move myself back and forth like this. The most complicated part of this build was the cradle that holds binoculars. It consists mainly of a frame of 1x2 red oak. I wanted something hard and stable because this was going to take all of the weight. With wood extenders because I found that for the eyepieces to track in a circle as you moved your head and tilted this up to see higher portions of the sky that you need these to follow in a circle and that that circle it has its center believe it or not at about where your ear is so I extended these sides up so that the pivot point and the eyepieces were about on the same level and so that this distance was about five inches above where my head rested here. The pivot pins are three eighth inch uh, bolts screwed into a, uh, an extender that's again one by uh, two and a half inches of red, red oak and then strengthened with a half inch piece of high quality plywood here. I put a couple of T-nuts on the ends because I had about a half inch of the bolt sticking out and I thought that this would provide a little bit more support. The actual dimensions, if you decide to make one of these, that I used aren't going to be a lot of use to you because they're all built around the chair. You need the width of the cradle to be wide enough so that it can slide 
freely. You need the length enough so that you have enough room when you move this forward that you can get in underneath it. And uh, the, uh, the counterweights, uh, which keep this balanced, are a function of how long these extender arms are. So uh, I'm not giving a whole lot of exact dimensions, but uh, hopefully the concept that I'm showing will give you enough information on how to build it. The framework that supports the bolts is again three-quarter inch plywood screwed through the framework of the chair to a backboard of also three-quarter inch plywood. This is where all of the weight is going to be supported, so you need this to be very strong. I added some gussets because it tended to shimmy a little bit like this. When you first assemble the chair, before you put the weights on the extender arms, the weight of the binoculars are going to make the, the cradle want to fall forward like that. To prevent that from happening, I added a couple of I, uh, of steel strapping with just one screw so that I can put the unit in in this position and then while I hold it move this out and that prevents the cradle from falling all the way forward. Once I have the weights on the extender arms everything's okay. I used a 25 by 100 millimeter binocular. You could build these chairs with smaller binoculars and it'll work even better. For this type of setup, I required 12 and a half pounds of weight on a uh, which is located about two feet from the pivot point. The half inch board on which the binoculars are mounted is mounted on a pair of linear bearings. These are used for kitchen cabinets and it allows it to slide forward and back. I have a string that's uh, mounted here so that if the chair, if the cradle ever falls forward like this, the binoculars won't slide off the end and break. I've also added a bungee strap here which takes up about half of the weight of the binoculars so that when you're in the chair it's much easier to slide it forward and backwards. If you just have your head, the back of your head, resting on the back of the chair, when you tilt up like this, because your head's not a perfect sphere, the, your eyes will tend to move in an ellipse so that since this is moving in a circle, the distances don't stay equal and you may have to stretch or lean back so that you, uh, you can keep your eyes where they need to be for the eyepieces. What I found helps a lot is I made a, uh, a little neck brace. It's just a piece of uh, swimming pool spaghetti tubing uh, thickened with a little piece of uh, kitchen towel to give it the right uh, dimensions. This is about three inches in diameter. I put this behind the back of my neck. Makes it uh, much more comfortable to use, but more importantly, when I'm uh, tilting the chair back and I'm following it by tilting my head, I find that my eyes follow a circle and the distance between uh, uh, the difference of the distance between my eyes and the eyepieces is constant so I don't have to be moving around quite as much. I experimented with several different techniques for attaching the weights to the end of the extender arms to uh, counteract the weight of the binoculars and in the end the simplest and most effective was just to use some velcro. What's nice about this is when you're out in the field trying to play with screws or clamps can be difficult in the dark. With the Velcro it's very easy. Easy to put on and even easier to take off. It also allows for changes in the amount of weight in case you need to touch it up a little. One of the problems with balancing the weight of the binoculars and the cradle with the weights at the back is that the uh, the balance point isn't constant. You'll put it uh, at a certain angle and it'll tend to want to drift up or drift down. I worked on this a lot and I couldn't figure out how to get it so it would stay put until I got this idea. I bought a four foot long piece of metal strapping, screwed it to the support cradle with a single screw so it can rotate, and then down on the chair 
I have a very powerful magnet screwed to the wood arm of the chair and then two screws to act as keepers so that the this uh, metal strapping can't slide back and forth. What this does is the magnet provides enough grip on this metal strapping so that wherever I put it, it stays in place. And yet, it slides very freely. I found this to be one of the most important features of this chair. No matter what size binoculars you decide to use for your chair, one thing I strongly advise is adding a baffle tube to the front end and eye cups to the back to prevent any stray light from getting into the optical path. This will increase the, contra the contrast enough so that you can pick up close to a full magnitude of brightness and stars. I also recommend lining the baffle tubes with black velvet. I've tested many different materials and a lot of them, when the light hits it, as they do in telescopes at a glancing blow, are almost as reflective as a glass mirror. Velvet is the one material that absorbs almost all of the light. It provides by far the best material for lining baffle tubes. If you can't do the angular ring type of baffling used for high-end refractors, which you can't do with binoculars because there's not enough distance uh, to play with to, uh, to do that effectively. And that's it. The whole thing goes together in less than five minutes and if I'm just uh, working in my backyard, most of that time is spent carrying it out from the garage into the backyard. I have found that this has returned having fun to astronomy. It was getting so that I was really getting mad to telescopes and just didn't want to go out at all. With this, it's fun again, and I'm enjoying it all over. So, if you're looking for a way to inject fun back into your astronomy, give one of these binocular chairs a try, and I think you'll be happy. Thanks for watching.